You are high as a kite. You are fucking high. It no, be out it, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't time exist. To perfect it for people. And they release it in 2056. They release it in 2077. For the Xbox One, like. they release it in 30 years for a fucking 50 year old console. And we are live. Welcome, everybody, to the Easy Company Podcast, episode number nine. I am Tango. I will be your host for this episode. Today, I'm joined by Angry Private Ryan, as always, and Ginger Beard Morgan Arthur Gaming. Cowboy. Ginger, Ginger <laughs> Beard Gaming. <laughs> How's everybody doing? So, <laughs> so for anybody <clears throat> who is listening to oh, the audio-only version right now, um, today is... What right, you're doing. You're missing out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ginger is... <laughs> Making a commitment to finishing Red Dead Redemption today, so much so that he is wearing a cowboy hat and the whole get up um, to really just immerse himself into the world is what I say, is mm-hmm. what I imagine. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> and a snap up button button up uh, shirt, Western shirt from Wrangler. Um, I didn't wear the cowboy boots because you guys can't see my feet, but I do have those somewhere. You want to hear the spurs so. every time you shift your legs around. I don't have spurs. I've got the boots. I don't have spurs, though. How are you going to get your chair yeah, to move, dude? One thing. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, kick, kick your chair. <laughs> Just kick yeah. all the way to the stand with your spurs. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. So what's up, boys? How's your weekend been? Fantastic. Okay, wonderful. Hell yeah. What have we yeah. been playing? I uh, didn't play anything yesterday. I, I, sat on, I literally sat on a couch for 12 hours yesterday. 12 hours and just watched football all day yesterday. That's really good for you, I hear. It is. It is. It is. Yeah. It's uh, probably better than of... sitting in these chairs that we sit in all the time, though. Honestly, <laughs> it's the leading cause of happiness in America. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> so, right. Couches and beer. Couches yeah. and beer and football. <laughs> uh, but no, I I didn't I didn't play anything yesterday. But I've been uh, uh, playing. Let's see. What did I play this week? Well, we played a bunch of Astroneer, which I'm sure we'll talk mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. Um, I pl- uh, I did play a bit, quite a bit of uh, Warzone this week because they did they did a new big update for Warzone and Cold War and all that fun stuff and brought all the Cold War guns into Warzone um, so you can play with guns from Cold War or Modern Warfare in Warzone and yada da da da. So <clears throat> like what um, what was uh, in Cold War that they didn't already have in Warzone? Um. Well, it's actually kind of funny. There's a there's actually a decent amount of overlap on the guns, but you can use either one because either each of them kind of feel different. And uh, so like the Cold War MP5 is actually stronger than the Modern Warfare MP5 because, you know, everything's unbalanced and whatnot. So huh. um, I don't know. It was it's, it's interesting. It did kind of refresh Warzone a little bit, um, but not enough to that's going to hold people. I think they need to, they need to release a map ASAP and they need to stop introducing game breaking bugs with every update that they do. That's never going to happen (laughs) right now. You can, you can do the, the unlimited stim glitch is back and you can become invincible or an invisible and invincible. Yeah. I saw that. So uh, um, good old God mode. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, and they still have not uh, implemented an anti-cheat system. So there's cheaters are all over the place. So how is Warzone uh, not implemented an anti-cheat system, especially by now? Like what? Don't know. Dude, it's it's truly baffling. They were just like, ah, it won't happen to us. We're going to worry about it. Like, what the fuck? Your war zone, dude. No, they got they got, you know, the intern Billy manually reviewing every report so he can you know <laughs> manually ban people so that that person can then go remake an account and just cheat some more. That, yeah. Billy became the dick guy. CD Project Red. So he just left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. He just left. Like, uh, Trey you know, I got Infinity great opportunity at CD Project Red. I'm going to go draw dicks. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Instead of catching dicks, I'm gonna go draw. Them. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've I've experienced enough of the dicks. I I can draw them from memory. Hey, that's crazy, <laughs> dude. That is crazy that they don't have an anti cheat yet. Like, tar- like even Tarkov had experimented with a bunch of different anti cheats. They used to be a big thing. Like hackers and Daisy mm-hmm. used to be a thing. I remember when I first played the Daisy standalone. Um, it was like a month into it, I found my first AK ever. You know, because like that game's pretty hard to learn. 
Um, and like I finally made it all the way to a military base. I found my first AK with ammo and I was so excited to go and use it. And this guy, I was playing with a friend of mine, and this guy just teleports in front of us. And all of a sudden I do the suicide animation. He makes me shoot myself with my own gun. Jesus Christ. And I was like, this, that's bullshit. And it was like this little ass kid, bro. I'm telling you, he's like, he teleports in front of me. He's like, hey, you, I'm a hacker. And I'm like, oh no, right? And he fucking, <laughs> uh, my guy just like, I knew stopped I shot moving. myself. <laughs> He stops moving, he puts his gun on his back, and then like he takes his gun back out again, and I'm like, what the fuck's going on? And then I see him get onto his knees and like put the barrel up to his chin, and I was like, fuck, bro, this is how I'm gonna go out. Like, <laughs> god damn it. Um, that's not really much of a problem in DayZ anymore, though, at least not in my experience. I haven't really encountered mm -hmm. any hackers, especially not that bad in a, in a long time, because they fucking implemented some anti-cheat stuff. Uh, I'm okay. pretty sure it's Battle Eye. I think whatever armor, th yeah. whatever armor uses. And uh, even Tarkov, I think, uses Battle Eye now. Battle like Tarkov Call of Duty just needs to use Battle Eye. Battle Eye is the fucking greatest. You know, it's not gonna catch one thousand percent of all hackers, but you know, I think no out, of, out of all of them, yeah, no anti cheat is. But even like easy anti cheat and all that shit, like I feel like Battle Eye has just built a reputation for themselves. You know, I just I don't know how you have a game that big and don't have have something like that, yeah, especially I mean, a game that is is as rampant as with cheating as it's been too. I mean, it is bad so mm -hmm. i you know i don't know it is what it is like i said it was fun to play again uh to kind of get back into it because it really has been a long time since i played it um and you know i'll play some more uh in the near future but it, i just don't have that like urge to play it like i used to and uh i don't know they 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 added a bunch of more maps to to cold war which has been fun and they added a new mode called prop hunt which have either of you heard of prop hunt before back in, in the day duty? yeah we they used to play that i think it so, used to be in call of duty like the old ones right yeah i think it's been in most of the black ops um i feel like it was in rainbow six too maybe i'm lying about that i remember I playing it i just don't remember where i played it so so ginger to explain prop hunt it's it's a lot of fun uh it's a great one to play like late at night when you're when you're drinking with your buddies and stuff but mm -hmm. Uh, what it's, I think it's still like six V six. Um, but one side of the team is just, uh, regular people, uh, with a default loadout. Um, the other side actually spawns in as objects from the map. Like, so oh. mop, mop buckets, um, oh, chi I, okay. chickens, and you've got to hide Lamps. amongst the map. Just, yeah. Yeah. And so, and the, the objective of the regular team is to find the props and shoot them and kill them all. And of course the props need to try to stay hidden for the time period of the, of the round and you switch back yeah. and forth and it's like best of five. And, uh, it's, it's a freaking blast. I, I was playing with Meech the other night. We stayed up till like one 30, uh, <laughs> on a, on a school night and just fucking, uh, played that for hours. It, it's a blast. So sometimes it's a prop you get screwed though right because you'll be like in a oh, house dude. and then you're just like a fucking a, like a pop-up shooting target you know what i mean <laughs> just like <laughs> what the fuck am i supposed to hide to look like yeah, i'm yeah. supposed to be here with this I, I saw a guy i was playing the other day i saw a guy he was trying to run away from a bunch of people he was like a mop bucket and he tried to change <laughs> uh because you get like two changes in the middle of the round so you can change props um and his last change they switched him into a big red scissor lift <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, you're just fucked now <laughs> the funniest thing though is when you get found out and you're just like a lamp right and all of a sudden like you know you, you got the guys that like walk by it and then they come back and do a double take and then the lamp just like scurries off <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, i was playing they added this new mall map and there's like this big fountain in the middle of the mall and i was i think it was a, a water fountain like a drink of water drinkable water fountain and this guy found me and so i would take off and I'm, I'm going around the water fountain in the middle of the mall and this guy uh clearly had never played a game with like a dog or a toddler um or maybe he was a dog or a toddler i don't know because <laughs> i literally for one and a half minutes went the same direction at the same speed <laughs> around the fountain and he just chased me the whole time he never tried to like switch it up or, like, over the middle like he never tried to juke or anything i just we just played ring around the fucking rosie for like a good minute and a half two minutes before like someone else came in and saw yeah. his you know their teammate just like yeah chasing a fucking uh fountain around and and you know switched it up a little bit but i was like what is this guy doing he hasn't even tried <laughs> 
Back in the day, when I was in high school, we played a game called Michael Myers. I don't know if that's still a thing. Where one person is Michael Myers, and the, the rest of the lobby can only run from him, and Michael Myers can only use his knife. And, like, the- mm. I think there's, like, a time limit. I, I can't remember what the time limit was, but... Basically, Michael Myers can, like, just sprint around and, and knife people, and everyone else just has to try to, like, survive. And I don't remember how they balanced it. I want, I want to say, like, maybe Michael Myers was the only one that was allowed to sprint, and everyone had to kind of just, like, hide. I can't remember exactly, but it was fucking, it was a blast. It was a blast. Was it like, was it like a mode that you guys just played, like, on your own, or was it an official mode? No, I okay, don't think yeah. it was an official mode. I, yeah. I, I don't know who came up with it or where. I don't, like, I don't, I, I played it with a bunch of buddies from high school. It was like, yeah, we, we filled up, a like, a lobby of, like, 12 or 15 people, um, just from, like, you know, friends of friends and, like, Trigio, get everybody that you know, we're gonna try this game mode out, so I don't know who created it, yeah. uh, if they saw it, like, on social media, and they're like, hey, we should try that out or whatever, but that was a fucking blast. Those are a blast, F filling up a Call of Duty private lobby with, like, 12 or so people and just playing, like, with your buddies and stuff. Mm -hmm. Good good times. Hell yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like Among Us. Um, no. Yeah. Nothing. No, that's a terrible game. <laughs> Why do you hate Among Us stupid so much? Game. It's a piece of shit, okay? <laughs> it's stupid, it's a dumb game, and it nobody likes it. <laughs> okay. That's debatable, but, all right. We can we can agree to disagree. Oh, we will. <laughs> we will. One thing I think we can all agree on is uh, Astroneers is fun. Yeah, we've put in uh, Astroneers a blast. Time. Yeah, we put in <laughs> like almost I'd say like sixteen hours almost at this point. I really enjoy like the terramorphing aspect of it. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, like grading roads and stuff, and you're like just taking materials from a giant hill and using that to make bridges and whatever else. They make it they make it very easy to like get used to too. Like it's not like super difficult to terramorph. Um it, it's yeah. it's pretty straightforward once you get once you get the hang of it a little bit. But the like the only thing it, I still it, struggle with is like trying to match two grades together. You have like yeah. kind of like a valley, right? And you're trying to like yeah. get them to match up and you like end up digging further on one side and you're trying to fix it and you're just creating this giant fucking mess. <laughs> I've been guilty of that a few times. Yeah, that that is the one one difficult piece of it. But uh, I the like game the itself um, is like pretty simple. I like the UI. I don't know if you like it, it's all like there's no it's all there's uh, no UI. It, it's it's like just a, like your backpack. There's no and, UI. Yeah. Right. It's just your backpack and like your your environmental cues and stuff uh -huh. like it. It reminds me in a weird way of I don't know if you guys ever played Dead Space, but that mm -hmm. was that was one of the first games to ever do that. And I thought it was like a survival horror game. But in the similar fashion, you're like third person kind of top down. And your the backpack is your like health indicator, and then your indicator of like how much charge you. I, I can't remember all of it, but it's it's like that. the same sort of thing. And you it, like something about that uh, kind of takes you, I think, down into the the game itself um, in a similar way in Astroneer. That's um, really cool. Phenomenal. Yeah, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was such a good <clears> game. <throat> I mean, I but I do think like it, it does give me that. Weirdly enough, it gives me that same kind of vibe where you're just I don't know. Like you, the very minimal UI, obviously not scary at all, except for the the tongue plants that launch you into the stratosphere. But <laughs> you hate um, pants. yeah, but I I like Astroneer because um because of that, and then I also think <clears throat> it does a really good job of um it's one of those like the simple yet complex games, like you know like like kind of it it, it lulls you into thinking that it's it's really easy to pick up and simplistic, and then you play for sixteen hours or however long we've played, and uh, I mean, it, you know, like trying to figure out the logistical challenges are, is yeah. pretty cool. It's, it's a lot of fun, but it's not too difficult. Like there's a lot of games that you, they give you seemingly impossible logistical challenges. And then you're like, okay, well, I, I just need to grind for 12 hours in order to get over this thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Astroneer, it, it, it hits a nice balance for all those things, I think. Yeah. It feels like it feels like you it, it makes you think about like what you're what you've got going on and it makes you kind of problem solve a little bit. But once yes. you hit once you hit the aha moment, it's very straightforward from there. So it's like you do have to kind of problem solve and think. But then once you've figured it out, you're like, oh, got it. And it's pretty straightforward from there. And right? that's awesome because that's what being an engineer is. And being an engineer is trying to solve the problem. Right. Like you're trying <laughs> to you want you were trying to create a system to work a certain way and you need to overcome whatever challenges and, and problem solve to get it to work properly and that's exactly what you mm -hmm. do in Astroneers. Um, the game is like it, it was a little overwhelming at first but only mm -hmm. for the first like 15 minutes or so and then yep. afterwards yeah. especially because we had three of us playing so that's like three brains trying to figure shit out right <laughs> versus <laughs> just the one. Like, maybe like 
we may add up to like two total. I was going to say, know. yeah, like three, <laughs> three <laughs> bodies, three maybe brain. two brains, you know, <laughs> it's like one and a half, two ish, three ish brains. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I, I've talked to people and they like played the game briefly and then they didn't know what they were doing and then they just put it down. You know, and I'm glad that we got mm-hmm. past that point because once you figure it out, man, it's like, it, it is simplistic um, enough for like, Oh, I figured it out. And it's actually really fucking easy. Like you, like everything that you can break down into another material like you can only break things down once right so every resource has one Mm -hmm. thing that you can refine it into it's not like oh you can turn that refined resource into an into an even more refined resource and all that shit like there's all the game resources the raw resource the raw resources and the refined resources from that and then the game even lets you cheat a little bit because you could have like the research lab like the soils lab mm-hmm. uh the yeah, trade platform and stuff incredible. where like if you need certain materials that you can't get on your planet you can just trade for it or create it with the soils mm-hmm. lab and um i mean i don't know I've, I've been having a fucking blast with the game especially like you know once once we like with the mining and stuff uh the mining is actually really awesome like when we were creating that giant mine and we were creating all this infrastructure to be able to get our tractors you know to to navigate like building that switch back down at the bottom and everything and yeah building the switch back building the road leading up to the mountain to like cut through all that harsh mountain terrain and using those grading tools that are just so satisfying to use they're so easy to use i think Two things here. Going back to the UI real quick. I think my favorite part about the the UI or non-existent UI is there's something like satisfying about having to like flip open a cover and press a button to start like crafting. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's true. That's really actually is. super. Like, you, yeah, pull, yeah, yeah. you pull it out and you're like, beep, beep, beep. Oh, I want to build that. Yeah. Click, pop. And then you're yeah. like, hey, <laughs> that was yeah. enjoyable. I, I, yeah, I that's feel, a very good point. I feel very accomplished. I love that about it. And it's that way on everything, right? Like your research tree, same thing. you got to like scroll through and find it. And then you press mm-hmm. a button and you research things. And I think I just think it's God. really cool. Um, Gamers are just monkeys. We just want buttons to fucking press. <laughs> That's why I said Christ. we are definitely at best yeah. two brains. Two brains. Yeah, wow. <laughs> let's not, well, let's not kinda, overplay it. <laughs> it kind of has the same tactile sort of, uh, you know, pleasure of like Legos, like which yeah. I said, like because well, all I the pieces are kind of Lego shit. Yeah, yeah. You said yeah. that while we were playing uh, on Friday uh-huh. night. I think you said it kind of feels like Legos. <laughs> which, That's yeah. Awesome. Um, it reminds me a lot of like space engineers though i freaking like it made me want to go back and play space engineers but space engineers was a little more complex than astroneers is yeah because you didn't just have like the mining gun that would just like terraform and and suck earth up from the fucking ground right you had to like actually drill you had to drill with your your character had like his personal drill and then you could actually create mining vehicles with big fucking drills on the end of it and like you had like a mining ship, you know what I mean? And they had like a giant fucking right. drill on the end of it. And you could use that to like go to asteroids and start drilling into asteroids and finding different resources and stuff. Um, that and like all the buildings in Astroneers, similar to like No Man's Sky, all the shit is kind of pre-made for you. So you could put it where you want to put it. But all the buildings and stuff are already pre-made. Whereas in um, Space Engineers, you actually have to build everything from scratch. Like it's very Minecraft-esque in that way. Um, mm mm-hmm. You have to build it like block by block, but I think a system that Astroneer uh, that that really makes Astroneer pretty awesome is the way they did their tether system. The tether mm-hmm. system yes. is very cool, and so for those who don't know, the tether system in Astroneer is basically um, so as as long as you're close to like your base or a structure or something around your base. Um, your spacesuit will connect to it to feed it oxygen. Um, but if you get away from it, you're not connected to the oxygen anymore. And so your pack has a limited amount of oxygen that you can hold. But you can connect these tethers, which are just literal lines that you place, mm-hmm. you know, every so often that connect to each other that will run oxygen with you. And it's it's really cool because it serves obviously as an ox, you know, survival uh, mechanic because you need to survive uh, you need the oxygen to survive it's it also serves as kind of like an exploration aid because you can tell like okay i know i went over here because i laid all these tethers um it can also really get you lost if you have a lot of tethers around um <laughs> unless you're us and, and you take, like crisscrosses yeah. down in the depths yeah, of the you're earth like wait a minute i took a <laughs> i took a wrong turn in albuquerque son of a bitch um 
and and then they also they, they provide like a like a visual aid because they their little tether things are little lights and stuff like that. So it's like I, I just think that system serves so many different uh purposes in the game and it's like almost the heart of the game is that tether system mm. so it's kind of it, it's really interesting it's i i like the way they i love the way they look too because they have that sort of like blue glow to them when they're actually activated and feeding you yep. oxygen and you're just like yep that is my lifeline like i can't stray too far <laughs> from this but it's like it's really especially awesome when you're in like a dark cave or like it's just nighttime outside and all you see is like the the glow of your tether system leading off into the darkness and you're just like oh okay that home is that way like it provides this sense of security and then you know one of them gets disconnected because you're fucking base building or whatever and you're like oh fuck <laughs> you're like fucking deep in the caves and oh. your, your lifeline just turns off <laughs> didn't one of us the first night didn't one of us act, i can't remember if it was Tango or Ginger, it might have been me. Someone hit the like reset button at the base yeah. and it turned yeah. the tether off while someone was out. <laughs> and someone's like, guys, my oxygen's off. <laughs> I remember Ow. Friday night though, I was like well far away because we were like exploring yeah. the fucking moon or whatever, or some planet. <laughs> and I think it was Ginger just like, hey Ryan, you want to see what happens when I do this? And all my uh, all the lights just turned <laughs> off and like Tango fucking suffocates is what happens when you do that. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> can't breathe, can't breathe. <laughs> I, uh, I appreciate about it how it's not... Um, I'm trying to think how to how to explain this, but it um, the survival element is there, but only just like basically the only thing you have to worry about is oxygen. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. Um, yeah. And and even that, you know, like turning the oxygen off is not that big of a deal. Like you can mm. you can make it quite a ways without being attached to a tether. Um, but I think that's actually like a, a strength of the game because you don't like I don't know, because you could compare this game to a lot of different games. Um like combat's not a thing in this game at all. Um, even in games like Minecraft, which is probably the spiritual success or uh, uh, predecessor of this one, predecessor successor. I don't remember. Pre predecessor. Um, predecessor. Uh, you know, you can you can fight monsters and stuff like that's part of the game. I think there are modded versions of Minecraft where you kind of just are the creative modes and whatever. But yeah. But anyway, I guess like it just doesn't do any of that stuff. It's just like no, we're not going to do any of that stuff. You're going to just have to worry about oxygen and then it's just building shit. And that's kind of an interesting and the logistical challenges you have to uh, solve are not really about uh, food or water or um, really anything other than oxygen. Uh, as far as the survival goes, the other logistical challenges are just like, well, what can we build next? Which I is interesting because it doesn't sound like when I'm explaining it that that would be compelling, but it but it is. It's it, fun. It feels it's, like I mean, it. it's the simplicity Another of it, though, that, that is compelling. Then another, yeah, uh, I think, an interesting logistical challenge that we've run into now is power at your bases. Mm -hmm. that's, oh yeah, that's, that's kind of that, that's kind of the other other aspect of it. But it, but I had someone actually um, on Friday night before my stream went to shit um, had someone <laughs> in my chat who came and was hanging out, and they were asked because they were like, "I've been kind of eyeing this game, and I figured I'd come watch someone play it." before I, you know, pull the trigger and they were asking about it and they, they asked that same, that almost that exact question. They go, so is this a survival game? Yeah. And I was like, not really. Yeah. Um, not in the traditional sense, right? No, there because are survival it, elements, but that's there's, right. yeah, that's what I said. I said, you know, they've got some very light survival elements that, that make it feel like, you know, you've, they at least, you know, portray well that you're on an, a, a planet that does not is not super hospitable for life. Right. Um, but not to the point where, like, you're worrying 24 seven about food, water, things mm -hmm. like that. So uh, it, it's it, I agree. It's interesting and it's hard to explain it. You really it's just kind of one of those things that come across when you're playing it. That It's like a feel thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dude. I am. Um, go ahead. I oh, know. I was just going to bring up Space Engineers again. Like I've just really been thinking about fucking going back and playing it after playing Astronauts. Well, let's, <laughs> well, so what I was going to say is like something that Ryan said when we were playing, I think the first night was like how much better it was uh, than No Man's Sky, which I thought was interesting because I've actually put in like, I don't know, like 60 hours or something into No Man's Sky. Um, uh, all of that is like post the catastrophic release and they've even updated it way more when I, when I actually got into it for a little while. And I thought that was interesting because, um, because no man's sky does a similar thing. Um, it, it, it simplifies a lot of the, 
like traditional space sim uh, gameplay elements. But I thought that No Man's Sky did it in such a way that it made the game super boring and grindy and terrible. <laughs> I mean, like it, it's fine. It's a it's a it's a good game. But like in order to actually like unlock the potential of that game, you literally have to put in like hours and hours. Like you'd, you'd have to play that game just exclusively for a long time. Um, and I just couldn't really get into it because the world always felt like to me, like the thing about space Sims is as, uh, complicated as they are, they can off like, like I'm thinking like an elite dangerous, right? Um, it does things way better. Some things way better than no man's sky precisely because it's so complicated and it's about like actually the logistics of, you know, flying around in space and stuff. And, uh, no man's sky kind of abstracts a lot of that stuff to make it more simple in a different style. Anyway, um, I kind of forget where I was going with this. I guess I guess just that No Man's Sky was tried to be more complicated than than Astroneer, and I think kind of fell on its face even while abstracting stuff from the space sim. I don't know. Somehow, somehow Astroneer just kind of hits the nail right on the head with a lot of different things. Didn't No Man's like. Sky come out? Well, I don't, I don't actually know this for a fact. But didn't No Man's Sky come out way before Astroneer? So I think Astroneer probably took elements from No Man's Sky. Yeah. And was like, hey, oh, we don't true. need all this extra shit. Yeah. All we need is like this tether system and we're good to go. Like, <laughs> well, what, and that's what the other thing. That, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, uh, continuing along with that point. Yeah, it, it did. No Man's Sky has been out for a long time now. Um, but they, they were another one of those games, not to get on my high horse again, that literally promised the world to everyone. And then it fucking flopped when it, when it came out. And I, and I think that there's something to be said for a game like Astroneer trying to be just what it is. Like, like you, you get the sense that they just started with a, a fairly simple concept, like Ryan said, like the tether system. And then they just ran with that and they built layers of complexity on that rather than starting with in the no man's sky vein, we're going to, we're going to offer a you a literal universe of, of procedurally generated planets. And you're going to be able to walk around on all of them and all the different animals and yada, yada, yada. And then you actually get into the game and you're like, Oh, this is actually kind of boring. Like, because but procedurally they, they generated did deliver on that mark, though. Think. Like the procedural generated planets are like there's fucking oceans and different mountains and like the variability in planets I think is really is really awesome in No Man's Sky and all and the variability in the different creatures that you come across too because it's not that often that you come across the same tweet the same creature twice on like a different planet. I feel like there's a pretty good variety um, in in all the different like fauna yeah, but- and all the animals and shit. The thing that drives mm-hmm. me crazy about it is. That all the space stations look exactly the same, and there's like three fucking alien races in the entire universe, and that really bothers me about it. I feel like there should be a little more variability in all the different space stations. Like, <clears throat> the th- even if there is only three different alien races in the whole universe, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But why do all of their fucking structures and their space stations look exactly the same as each other? Like, they should well, all have their yeah. own style, their own feel, and like it should feel like I'm in a different solar system every time I jump from one solar system to another. But it feels like I've just jumped and I'm a little closer to the center of the universe, whatever the fuck that means, because we don't I don't actually know it's there. <clears throat> but I feel like I'm jumping from one solar system to another and it feels like the same goddamn solar system every time, just with different exactly. planets. And that exactly. is that is the only thing that I think really I don't like about No Man's Sky. Everything else about it, I, I really love. I love the way the planets look. I love the I love exploring the planets. I love like just fucking mm-hmm. being on the being on the on the planet surface and just like, you know, flying my ship around looking for old anomalies and all that stuff. I think that's all really awesome, but I just I think you feel like, like you're in a different it's solar 50, system. It's 50 miles wide and about an inch <clears> deep. That was what I always didn't love about it. Like, and almost by 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 it being so huge, you you're you're even more aware of how little depth there is. Do you feel universe, like you're not you know? making progress? Yeah. At least that's how yeah. I felt. I feel like oh, I'm jumping. I'm getting closer to the center of the universe. I'm getting closer and closer and mm-hmm. closer. But I don't feel like I'm making any progress because everything looks and feels the same. The I I've played I think me and and Ginger put in one kind of real good session of No Man's Sky. Um, That was my first time playing it. What what got me about No Man's Sky that made me just put it down and never pick it back up was um, I think out of our, you know, 10 to 12 hour playthrough that we did or whatever, I think we spent like nine of that flying to different planets trying to find a planet that was somewhat like hospitable for a base building Mm -hmm. you know like i mean it was just 
And then every time you enter into a new solar system, it's like, oh, there's, you got you got to fight off these aliens and then or raiders or whatever they were. And then you Sentinel, get onto the robots. Yeah, and then you get onto the planet. And you've got those little the little robots too. And I'm just sentinels. Like, yeah. I, okay, I, I'm I, fucking I, done. Dude. Now, like this, maybe is someone, ridiculous. maybe someone in the comments can explain this to me, like a No Man's Sky veteran. But what the fuck? Like sentinels on every like on every planet that has anything valuable. I can get like a couple of them, but they literally exist to make your life miserable while yeah. you're trying to get the best resources in the game. Like. Or at least just having a planet to set your base up on that you can actually fucking breathe yeah. on. Like that's what it's I'm like, saying. You, it's I, like we spent entered- our whole time just trying to find a planet with an atmosphere that didn't have acid rain. Yeah. And it was just <laughs> fucking crazy. And then it's like it's like literally you load into a universe where you you were just born into, and like this this giant conglomerate has literally just sucked up all the resources, and they're like, nope, this is ours. I mean, the Sentinels, you can't even, to my knowledge, from uh, remembering playing it, you can't even clear them out. Like no, you can't even clear out of space. Like you, <laughs> they literally, they just the, the Sentinel level just keeps going up and up and up and up, and they're just gonna kick your ass harder. Like I really like that that part of it. I was just like, I don't understand who thought this was a good idea like it ruined why, it. why would this be fun i yeah. don't mind having to like clear out an area and then and then be able to you know be, reap the benefits of what i just did but like and then an maybe once in a while foe. a sentinel will come and fuck with you and you have yeah. to clear it off or whatever but like yeah they come like every fucking 10 10 minutes or less like you have yeah. a sentinel yeah. that's and then like you know you kill that one and then your wanted level goes up or whatever you'd call it right I, with the with the sentinel organization yeah. i can't remember yeah. what it's called but yeah it's it's kind I of feel, fucking it's i kind feel of like they just didn't they they designed these things without really thinking i've been thinking a lot about um weirdly enough i've been watching um arma 3 um from from people that create arma 3 ops and like uh videos about like how to make those those ops fun and and like kind of like the theory behind it and like one of the, I, I watched this video by this guy named Remy down under who said that you know like basically you need to you need to you, you have you have two two main um, sort of variables in your in your op like you've got time and fun. <clears throat> People have a limited amount of time, so you want to cram as much fun as you can into the limited amount of time that people have. Right, that's that's your objective as an op creator, and like the same goes for like game design. And it's like I don't understand. Astroneer feels like they 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 took that to heart and they're like, okay, we're gonna cram as much fucking fun. We're gonna get all this extra extra you know bullshit out of out of our game, and we're just gonna focus on you know exploring, mining, base building, you know logistical challenges of engineering and yada yada. And then No Man's Sky, it just feels like they were like, let's let's just spread as much you know as this this little amount of fun over as 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 big a time as possible. I don't know. I think I, I've been I think thinking about different. that a lot becomes whether the game developer or whatever started did a like a top down or a bottoms up build yeah. of their of their idea right so like something like uh Astroneer was a a bottoms up approach they took the individual components and then they decided how it all fits together and built up whereas no man's sky took this grand idea of having this unlimited universe that you can explore and do whatever you want and build your bases and there's an economy and it's great and it's awesome and it's so much fun and at the top level hell yeah that sounds cool but then you have to go down and try to find the pieces that would build up to something like that and it's just that's not really um especially in it in a in a new in a completely new idea right it's it's that's going to be difficult to do well, and no one asks the question uh, of that first big idea. Is that fun? Like I'm, I'm, I'm becoming <clears throat> as somebody who was really enamored with like procedurally generated back in the day. I'm becoming more and more skeptical because everybody does it now. Like it's like procedurally generated, yada yada yada. And it's like I, that doesn't indicate to me fun. I mean, like you can have a procedur- procedurally generated game full of horse shit, like and, and it's procedurally generated, but it doesn't make it fun. You know, I mean, it, it just I don't know. I'm, well, I'm becoming it, really skeptical of that. It used to be because, like, you know, when, when procedurally generated shit first came out, which wasn't all that long ago, right? It's only been a few years because, no. I mean, that, that was a pretty big achievement in video game development was a oh, procedurally generated game. That was supposed to be the answer to, um, like, oh, we can the, the game's never going to lose its replayability. 
right? Right. Yep. Like that yep. was going to be the answer to that problem, but it just didn't turn out to be that way because at the end of the day, like you're still playing the same game, and even though the maps change or the enemies, like the number of enemies or where they pop up changes, whatever, like you're still playing the same game, and uh, yep. it, it's just a natural response for humans to always want more out of what they have. Yeah. Yep. No, completely agree. Um, Talk to us about space engineers. Sell us on space because, like, I'm, I'm actually. I mean, you. I would be willing to give that another shot. I mean, I, but I, but, but it, to your point, I think it was like way more complicated. I'm not sure I have the same. It was brain, more complicated you, you because even I, I don't. I definitely really don't build spaceships. But I'm really <laughs> fucking. <stupid. Yeah. laughs> Bro, let me tell you something about army engineering: is that we build shit to like and hope it lasts for like you know three months before we move on to the next thing. So. We definitely aren't building the spaceships anytime soon. But Space Engineers was really fun. Um, it was a lot more complex because it also brought the laws of inertia into play, whereas, like, in yeah. space, an object in motion stays in motion until an outside force acts upon it to either slow it down or change its direction of movement or whatever. And so when you're building a ship in Space Engineers, you, may, you need to have the thrusters in the back to propel it forward. But in order to slow it down, you also need to have thrusters in the front, side, top, and bottom, and you need to kind of design your ship around, like... I want this ship to be maneuverable in all directions, but I also need to have drills in the front of the ship that if I have a thruster on the front of my ship, I'm not going to, like, damage parts of my ship with my own thrusters, right? <laughs> but, um, like, the I, I, the mining of space engineers, I remember being really fucking awesome because you have, like, your personal drill, right? And you could, like, drill into an asteroid or a planet, whatever, with your personal drill and get resources that way. But if you want to be more efficient at it, now you have to start engineering equipment to help you out um you need to have like a rover for example on a planet that has big fucking drill bits on the front of it that also has a sustainable power source so maybe solar panels with a battery attached to it right something like that like how how you actually end up building this piece of equipment is in, is up to you as the engineer to figure out um you know how how it's going to be built but um, if you have like it, it, everything in space engineers is all about collecting resources, mining resources and trying to build equipment that's going to help you do more to do that more efficiently. And um, whether you're going to build like outposts on a planet or a space station out in out in space so that you could mine asteroids more efficiently or you could design a giant fucking ship like in Star Trek and Star Trek, you know, what I mean, and, and that ship is like a giant, you know, let's say like an aircraft carrier. The, the equivalent of an aircraft carrier in space where you have like a giant mobile base that you have like flying the ship, you know, but there, there's just a lot you can do with space engineers. It's like it's, it's really fucking limitless. Um, and the, the damage system I always thought was fucking awesome. Like when two ships collide or when a ship collides into that's, a space that's station. That's one piece of it that I loved. I loved, I loved crashing shit into each other to watch how it <laughs> right. break apart. And now you're in damage control mode. Like, oh my god, we just hit a fucking asteroid. Let me go to the control panel. Okay, our oxygen is fucked. Like, or our, our fucking, yeah. like, fuel, our fuel tanks are fucked up. So now you're like, you got your little jet pack and you're out in space and you fucked. got your little blowtorch and you're trying to repair shit desperately because all your systems that you've built are fucked up like uh you know that sounds fun it's about building systems it's about building systems to efficiently collect more resources to to build more it's like to, to add to your base you know um but i'm but, but i'm i'm very stupid so i've <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Space Engineers <laughs> is a super intimidating game at first, right? But like, I, I've played enough of it that I feel like I'm, I'm probably pretty rusty at it at this point. But I would fucking definitely want to like venture into that game with some friends because I played with like a couple of friends, but I mostly played it by myself when I did play. And like, you know, I was able to build a pretty badass base. Um, th there are other threats though, like on the uh, on the planets. There's different like monsters and shit that you have to fight off unless you turn the monsters See, I don't off. I think they. When we were playing, I don't even think they had that sort of thing. I only put 3.8 hours into it. Yeah, I didn't even. Oh, yeah, you barely scratched the surface. surface on it. I get it's better than me. I gave it 50 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It was like, I was like, where could we crash shit into each other? I was, like, All right, I was like, I crashed it. And then he's yeah. like, yeah. And I'm like, OK, I'm done. I'm going to leave now. I um, I'll play with you, Tango. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I would give it a shot. It'll be the next uh, easy company. Team, team stream team. stream team mm -hmm. or quick, fuck, quick I always PSA. Mix that up. quick PSA yeah. you can't you can um build or uh research and put drill bits on the front of your vehicles yes. in Astroneer. 
Yeah, we just oh, haven't nice. got there yet. Yeah. Just didn't know that. Just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah, I want to look at like it seems like you can also like automate things. The other game that I was going to mention that's kind of in the similar vein as Astroneer, um, that I've played quite a bit of actually is um, uh, uh, Satisfactory. Satisfactory. Yeah, but that one that one is also interesting because there's not there's not a survival element to it really at all. You have a health bar, but it doesn't like go down or anything. Um, and, and, and there are some like wildlife, you know, hostile fauna that you have to, uh, deal with, but they're not that big of a deal. That game more than like the exploration, it doesn't really have any mining to it. It's all about creating a literal factory with automated, um, you know, like, like you're, 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 you've got your miner, which is mining, the iron that's coming out of the ground, it's going into a refiner, which is making little iron rods. And then you've got like a little pressure thing that makes it into, you know, plates. You use the plates to, you know, grind up and make screws. You use the screws to make, you know, reinforced metal plates. I mean, like, and, and you're, you're automating that entire process. It's really good. I just find myself getting to the point where um, my brain just short circuits because it's just gotten <laughs> way too complicated. And I can't, I don't have the, I don't have the engineer brain you know, to yeah. make it, make it any better. And then it just drives me nuts. Cause nothing is, as, but it's, a, it's about efficiency. Right. And you look at, you watch YouTube and like people have multi-story factories that are just, you know, amazing. But I, I could never do that My with like a just, power grid to sustain it yeah. and stuff. That's what I fucking loved about like, even like, so space engineers had this conveyor system where like your, mm-hmm. your vehicle has like a kind of an outlet, on the bottom of it or wherever you decide to build it right and then you could build on your spaceship a connector that connects to your ship so that you unload all of your ship's inventory into your base and you build this whole conveyor system that puts it into your storage and then if you put your storage connect that to your refinery now you have access to your storage from your refinery so you don't have to like put everything in your character's inventory then bring it to the refinery and shit so you know and then the, all that and trying to manage your power grid too, whether you get power through solar panels and, and store it in giant batteries along your base, you know. Um, and everything that was in Space Engineers, you don't just place blocks down, like you, you do, but they're not finished blocks, so you have to get your little blowtorch out and you have to actually complete it yourself. So your character with his little jetpack flying in space goes up and you, you're kind of just like welding all of this shit together. Uh, and the same if you want to break it down, like you kind of fucking have your you have your little grinding tool and you grind it down to nothing. Right. Yeah. But it like it, it's really awesome when you have this idea and you build this giant skeleton of what your plans are. And then you go with your little blowtorch and piece by piece, you start like actually, you know, putting it all together. Um, you It really just it it feels like you're fucking doing construction in space. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine that. I, I'm good oh, yeah. at pointing oh. at things and shooting them. Yeah, right, right, right. Well, there's, there's some of that, Speaking too. Of- I don't remember the combat being that great in Space Engineers, but there's dogfights and shit like that, too. There's, like, space pirates yeah. that you can go out and hunt. And, yeah. It's pretty lit. Ram my ship into them. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I wanted to talk about Cyberpunk again. I wanted to bring that back up. It got taken off the PlayStation Store, and it's only thirty dollars on Steam. What's going on? Is it only thirty dollars on Steam? Yeah, it went on I'm sale really? for thirty bucks. I'm fucking mad, bro. What? I paid sixty dollars for that shit. <laughs> I've got a lot Wait, of are people are mad, bro. Yeah. On I Steam? swear to God, I swear to God, I saw. A I'm thing looking today. at it right now. It's fifty nine ninety nine. What the fuck? They showed me an ad that said it was thirty dollars. Huh? Fucking line, Ryan. Line, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, they. Oh, um, yeah. I see it. I see it as. Can you pull up your little like? Do I just re- reboot Steam for it to pull up that like headlines oh, yeah, yeah, thing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's see, yeah, I swear to God, it. swear to God, I saw it for thirty dollars. Well, the I'm reason, pretty well, anyway. We are but again. Anyways, the reason I wanted to bring it back up is because I said a couple of things about it on the last podcast episode that aren't true. Um, the first thing okay. I said is that there's not any actual sex scenes in the game. That was definitely a lie. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, that was a fucking lie. <laughs> so, uh, since then, I have seen some shit. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Tango has become a man. <laughs> um, and the second thing, so I said last time that Cyberpunk, oh. the only reason that the game was released when it did was because of all the hype and that people were going to like fucking hold the torches to them if they didn't release it when they did. And uh, that 
was just not the truth because since that time I have learned that CD Projekt Red is a publicly traded company and that makes a lot more sense to me now why they released the game when they did. Um, essentially, CD Projekt Red had promised a release date not to the gamers, but to the people who were paying them before the game released. They're fucking investors, right? And so um, I could just see how that conversation went down, how you have Big Boss Man coming into the you know development studio like, hey, mm-hmm. how's this game looking? We're due to release. And the devs just kind of being like, yeah, you know, listen, uh, we, we really don't want to release this game. We need an extension. All right, we got, like, what was the extension? A month or something like that? I can't remember exactly what it was, but... Like, all right, you got a month. You got a month to make this game releasable. And so, you know, they're fucking... And fun fact, CD Projekt Red, the game came out in December, on December 10th, right? Starting in September, so two months prior, um, they actually started working six days a week to try to produce this fucking game on time to be able to release it, which is really ironic given the fact that a reoccurring theme of the game is corporate exploitation of employees. (laughs) Jesus Christ. <laughs> but you know that happened, and I am um, <laughs> and so December tenth. I, I would have been around. making them work work seven days a week. <laughs> Ryan, you corporate corporate shill. I work so so that's that's funny. So I did not realize. See, so this just I, I did not realize they were publicly traded. Um, and to your point. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. I, I work in a, uh, for a publicly traded company in, in finance. And so, um, I am completely aware of the, the pressures that fall upon a, a publicly traded company on a quarter to quarter basis. Mm -hmm. Um, and especially when you have a very large project in the works that, um, your company's leadership, your investors, and your customers are all eagerly awaiting completion of. I, I've been, you know, very involved in in things like that uh, in my professional experience. So that's interesting, and and um, I, I don't think I realized that. So. And before uh, this year, CD Projekt Red had promised, like, okay, we're not going to finish this game in a time crunch. And then September rolls around, and they're like, okay, we need to finish this game in a time crunch because, you know, people are expecting this game to be out. And it wasn't the player base. And the player base, you know, obviously wanted the game first, and you're never going to please everybody. But, like, I think the player base would have lived with them waiting to release the game until it was in a better state. But... Lived. um live yeah live <laughs> <laughs> in quotations yeah no but uh you know i could just see that same boss man coming around you know around december 10th right before it and he's like hey where are we at and the dev team being like listen we really are not in a position to release this game and you know big boss man just being like fuck it we have Holy to send shit. it we have to send it and so uh cd project red's stock price since then i'm not sure where it is now last time i checked it was like 40 percent below where it was when the game launched like the game's yeah like like literally almost fucking half right because all those investors right they, oh, it, it spiked up when the game re- what day did launched. It release december 10th okay. can you check what happened to the stock price on december 10th is that what you guys are checking yeah I'm no sure. i'm well Go ahead. I'm not going to derail. It was on its way down. So, okay. So here's what happened to stock price. This is for the last month. So starting about November 27th, it went on and up from 97 US dollars. Uh, Keep in mind, they don't trade on like US markets. So this isn't like this is a Polish company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, so they went from $97 on uh, the 27th of November. They climbed up to a high of $120. Um, so it's a substantial increase, uh, on December 7th and you said it released Three on days the before the release. I want to, yeah, I think it was the 10th. I'm pretty sure. Okay. So then, so 120, 120 on the seventh by the 10th, it had fallen back down to one Oh one before on the 15th hitting a low of 82. So that's five days after release it made a slight recovery for a couple days up to 88 and now is at $78, uh, which is down from a, 120 bucks. Yeah. It's like 40%, dude. 
which is a uh, let's see in the past year they have been lower than this in the past year, but not by much. Holy so, shit! What that tells you is that the devs really did not want to launch this game. Uh, they were just kind of forced to because you know the people who invest in stock. And even in video game stock, don't necessarily know anything about video games at all. They're just investing money and expecting a return on their investment. And, uh, you know, that, that, that was the only reason they launched the game when they did. So with that being said, um, CD Projekt Red is now like once once they offered that, like, hey, we're, we're, we're sorry. Once that apology came out, that was like, oh, fuck, they fucked up. They realized it. Everybody realized it like. The, and, and you know, our my first impressions of the game when we were talking about this last week, that was um, I had like two days into the game. Now I have a little over a week into the game. So um, I will say that the, the, the core foundation of the game and we were giving it a lot of praise last week and still, you know, talking about the bugs and shit. But like the, it still deserves the praise um, for anybody who can actually fucking run the game um, like on a higher NPC or on an Xbox one X or whatever. Um, like the game deserves its praise because the, the core foundation is the foundation of a phenomenal game, but obviously it just was not in the state to be released when they released it. And that's just highly unfortunate for them. It's so much that they actually pulled it off the PlayStation network. Like yep. that, that's how, you know, she's and, really and, and are offering refunds to anyone who bought it. Yes. And, and rightfully so. Like they should not have released it. If, if you can't run the fucking game and you're, you're buying a game under the impression that you're, you're going to be able to run it, especially, especially on a on console, a console. especially yeah. on a console, because you can't fucking modify can't a console mod in any way. So that's all. Yeah. Right, it's you know, um, rightfully so. Like, so rightfully so people are absolutely right to be pissed off, you know, especially if you're on like one of the older consoles or on maybe even a lower end PC and you can't run the game like you, thought you would be able to here's here's the deal too um speaking from a finance perspective that stock was going to crumble regardless because it was on it a was high going to crumble it was going high. to no 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 it was going to crumble because either a they release the game before it's ready and it's a bad launch mm. or it crumbles because they announce another delay and investors lose confidence in the company either they were in a no-win situation but they were in a no win situation because they fucking hyped the shit out of it. Like that's yeah. it. I don't like, I don't really feel, Oh, I mean, okay. No, I, no, I no, no. Feel, okay. I would say I would feel sympathy yes for no. developers. If that's the case that they, that they were, you know, they were forced to release something before it, before it, you know, was ready, but like, don't. Uh, yeah. Okay. So yes and no. And Andrew I Morgan's think going to get fired up again. I think I, I think I know what your what your rebuttal to this is going to be, and and I kind of understand it. So, but here's the deal: yes and yeah. no. They were they were in a no win situation because of because of the way they hyped it up. Y yes and no, but they were more in a no win situation because they failed to execute. Mm -hmm. And now, then the rebuttal would be: well, they failed to execute to what they hyped. Yeah. Okay. They, yeah. I just but I just it, you, they failed to execute. They they did not do what they promised right. in a in a in a publicly traded company. Whether it's from a financial perspective, whether it's what you are what you are releasing as your product, you have to execute to your timeline mm -hmm. and to your uh, you know foundational commitments of that product. They didn't they didn't do it, and that's why they, that's why their game is is suffering right now. As as good of a of a game as it is, you know, from a yeah. foundational perspective, very unpolished, but a good good game from what I understand. Right, as good of a game as it is. They, they did not follow through on their financial or product commitments, plain and simple. Yeah. They, and, they announced the release of this game. I just uh, on their on their website in 2012. Yeah, it's been in development for ago. a decade. The fuck? <laughs> I didn't realize I graduated, graduated high school. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm oh, sorry. They didn't, they didn't they didn't follow through on their on their commitments, plain and simple. So one thing we can as all a, agree on, though, because we were failed. talking about how hypes kill fucking video game launches, mm -hmm. and I mean, yeah, like that that happened. We all we all knew that was gonna happen. We fucking we all we all saw it coming. But uh, well, and also and also going back to our conversation, I don't know that you could make the same criticism of them, but the same criticism of No Man's Sky. I mean, it's 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 the same it's the same shit, you know, it like was. like you 
you know, you, you build this giant vision and giant idea. And like, to be fair to them, I mean, I, I even said the last podcast that like, I was wrong about the, the, uh, the, I mean, the gameplay itself is, seems to be pretty solid, right? Yes, um, definitely. But I, I was not wrong about, <laughs> about a lot of people going to be disappointed about it being rushed and about it being hyped up. I mean, everybody like, Nobody even fucking plays it on Twitch anymore. I mean, it's it's pretty much dead. Like no, as people far as people like play the, it on Twitch, and not not as many people because they it was a first right. time that everybody fucking played it on Twitch. But there's yeah, still but a lot everybody's, of big streamers that are still playing. It. I guess yeah, but most people are finished. But they with can it, run the right? game. Most of the big people. Sometimes yeah, right. a lot. I saw like Shroud last night doing a. He was replaying a second character. Uh, Co Carnage got, obviously yeah. he just plays the hell out of it because he's a character in the game, but. 53 viewers on Twitch right now. 53,000, sorry. I was just going to say, damn, that shit fell far, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. There's probably, oh, there's probably man. one person with like, or like three like people with 40,000. A third of those apiece, right? Or nope. no? Nope. Uh, most, most has 737. Most of the bigger streamers tend to stream on the weekdays more, more yeah, so than they do true, on the weekends. Yeah, true. That's true. That is true. Like if, if the people who like do this for a living. I haven't seen a lot of activity from the big guys on. I have. At least the ones the that I guys. follow, a lot of them are still playing it because they have the they have the, the technology to run it. You know, most of these mm -hmm. um, career yeah. streamers have like supercomputers that they aren't having the same issues right. that most that Multiple the majority of people aren't having. Yeah, multiple supercomputers. Um, and even my computer like is pretty good, but I, I it. It, it gets pretty damn hot when I try to stream the game, my CPU in particular. But yeah. like, I, you know, I, I'm still able to play the game and enjoy it. And um, uh, you know, a lot of people just aren't able to do that, unfortunately, because their their system can't run the game um, because it's not well optimized enough, or because they just fucking. I mean, like, come on! You, if you're gonna put a game on a console, at least you should be able to play it on the damn console. PC is like put you it, can upgrade. They shouldn't have put it out on old gen. That's that that really. I know they were probably trying to just increase in you know increase their exposure and player base to right but unless deke said like on the last podcast well, you know like don't buy it unless you have like the xbox one x or the ps4 pro yeah, but or it, see the way i see it if you're gonna if you're gonna release it for the xbox one you know because it, it's an xbox one regardless if it's an old xbox one or if it's a one x it's an xbox one and you're going to release it for xbox one yeah. i just don't think you should release it for that console if it's not going to work on every span of that console like yeah like the xbox I, one you just base xbox one should just be like your your minimum fucking exactly yeah, if, that you and, should and, be striving for if you have a one x you're going to run it better and you're going to run it at 4k and that's fine but you can't you can't release it on on a, a tranche of consoles that are in the same family. In my opinion, you need to. It should have been a next. Do you remember back in the day when like the 360 and even the one released? There were games that they were just they released it for the next gen console. That's what they did. And mm -hmm. so what? If, why try to make it hard on yourself and and release it for a less superior? piece of art i because they wanted to reach more people and they and obviously make more money yeah they yeah. want to make more money which is understandable but they also no, put themselves you do not in have time to, you do not have to convince me about the desire to, like i get i i am a businessman by trade yeah. ryan i am money all is what about makes the world making go more money <laughs> however but you have to understand they are that stock price falling like that i mean they lost more money doing not, that but that but that's it's not because they produced a bad game or because like really it's because they didn't have enough time like it's fine they if didn't have enough time to produce the products execute. that they wanted they didn't execute okay yes well yeah. okay they they should have pushed the fucking game back right because if they had planned to put this game out on xbox one and ps4 and it was not ready regardless of whether they hit their timeline or not the, the investors don't fucking know anybody better and they don't care, but the game should have had an extension so that it could be playable on all consoles because there's nothing wrong with them putting the game on old gen. I can't believe Xbox One and PS4 are old gen now. I can't believe I'm even yeah, saying that. That's crazy. I feel like that should just fucking launch, but even still, um, I, I kind of fucking just lost as my an train investor, of thought there, I would they say, should have had more investor, time. I would say no you should not have an extension necessarily because you've had multiple extensions as an investor. I would say you as a company should have done what you needed to do to get a good product out on the, on the timeline that you delivered, whether that means you hire a ton of people 
and you dump a mon- bunch of money into your your resources, you make people work seven days a week. I I don't know. You do you 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 go and you fucking execute. Otherwise, you're gonna get you're gonna either you're gonna get crucified because you put out a bad game, or you're gonna get crucified because you you push back and you didn't follow through on your commitments. That's that's how business works. That's how especially how public uh, publicly traded companies right. work. That's just the way it is. But I'm of the opinion that. Video game developers, like video game companies, should never, ever, 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 ever be publicly traded. Ever. Ever. Because you're producing, a qual- you're producing a product that is supposed to be for the people who are enjoying it. It should not ever be about the investors ever. And if you make your company publicly traded, you have put yourself in the position to appease the investors more than you have appeased your player base, which is what you're fucking supposed to be all about as a company. I can't believe I'm not the one arguing that. I, like, I, I agree completely. But I'm, <laughs> I'm glad to not be the only one that has that opinion. And because is, EA does the same arguing. shit. <laughs> EA does the same shit, man. Like, it's okay, all about the investors. No, so here's, no, 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 no. Yes. I think you are, you are doing CD Projekt Red a disservice there by saying just because they're publicly traded, they've put themselves in the same realm as EA. EA, yes, they're a publicly traded company, but they're, they're, a, they're a Walmart. Uh, they're, that's a different different play P- companies become publicly traded companies to to expand their access to capital to continue to grow the products that they're making yes um you can you you cannot i don't think you can grow as a you cannot expand the products you are making you cannot make them better you cannot make them bigger you cannot make them what people want and what you want to give to your customers, you cannot do that without expanded access to money. And the, the, the way you do that is you open it up to investors. That's There's the only way you plenty do of video game companies that are not publicly traded that make awesome games. The, the underlying assumption there but they're is they're not making is- big, big games that make lots of money. Most big games fucking suck though for for like for 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 actual content though. I mean that's my yeah. opinion. But like but 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 like the the assumption there is that you need to be bigger to be better. And that that I mean there are underlying like political differences that I probably have with most people on on what what is actually better for you know the health of <laughs> everything. But like you know like I, I don't I don't I don't I I don't agree that bigger. I mean we spent a whole podcast talking about indie games and about early access games and about small developers. And like, I stand by my, uh, my opinion that, that indie developers, small developers like Astroneer, which we just got done talking about are infinitely better and in doing infinitely more revolutionary, interesting things than any big developer. And I like, I have not seen anything that changes my mind about that. I mean, I, I think that, I think that there's an element of, um, for lack of a better word, greed, that goes into it. And that's, and I, I, that, that's, that's a simplification, but it is like, that's what happens to you. I mean, 2012, they announced cyberpunk, you know, before that they're making Witcher, they're making Witcher two assassins of Kings, which by all accounts was one of the best games that they'd ever made, which are the Witcher games are wildly successful. Yeah. And then they go and then they go and get publicly traded in, in 2018. And, you know, I mean, you can see the elements of the old CD project red and the greatness in this cyberpunk game. But I mean, overall, if you've worked on this game, you've kind of probably got to feel shitty about it because it's like, <laughs> it's just not what you probably wanted and it's not what the gamers wanted. Um, it's probably not what they, they had in like, mind in 2012, right? No. I'm glad that you looked that up because I was I was wondering, I was going to use How Witcher 3 as an example. You thought it would be in 2012. The, do you know, uh, everything's changed since 2012. The, the, the technology we have available to us, the hardware that we have available to us, is 100% different. You can't take a decade to put a... No, no, I'm, okay, I'm not that's saying true. that's yeah, true, yeah, that's but true. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you found out that they went publicly traded in 2018. Cause when did Witcher three come out? 2016, 2015. That game was wildly successful out of all the money yep. they made on that game. You're telling me that they needed outside funding from investors to be able to make cyberpunk what it was. Witcher three was fucking phenomenal. Jesus Absolutely Christ, phenomenal. I can't even imagine what cyberpunk would be if they did not have public 
public funds. It I probably be better. It, no, it wouldn't be out. It, would be it wouldn't fittest. fucking exist. No, it wouldn't. No, it, it wouldn't be wouldn't. out. And You're that's fucking, the point. You are <laughs> high as a kite. You are fucking high. It wouldn't no. be out okay. because they'd still be, be taking the time exist. to perfect it for people. And they'd release it in 2056. <laughs> they'd release it in 2077. The if that's what it's like. They'd release it in 30 years for a fucking 50 year old console. You're high as a kite. You but, can't but, change but, my mind. You can't but, change like, my mind. They, but I mean, what? I mean, so, so you basically you're saying your argument is Ryan that they wouldn't they wouldn't have been able to make it like next gen as far as like the graphics go, right? Basically, without without publicly my trading argument, all that money. My argument is you could not have you you likely could not have the resources in place. And when I say resources, I mean people. Like is is mm. the, probably the biggest resource, right? Yeah. You could not have the resources in place to make a game of this caliber in the timeline that you need to be able to make it because you yeah. have a specific timeline you need to you need to fit this game in before the technology advances again and then all of a sudden you're outdated you cannot make a game of this stature in that timeline with with uh, it with limited funding if you're if yeah. all you're surviving on if all you're surviving on is is the profits from your last game you you can't do it I, I would be willing to bet the house that I don't own, but, but that's not. But I wonder, I wonder if you were, if you were a developer right now, if you wouldn't have just like try, you know, wouldn't have rather pared back that project a little bit, maybe not made it as great. I mean, cause like graphics are just. I, but so what, so, okay. But then we get into this situation of uh, we're just like in this complacency of, of putting out uh, the same game over and over. No, because you're not, no. you're not growing and making a new, making any advancements. I mean, I think there's a difference between growing and then just absolutely shooting for the fucking, you know, I, sun. I don't even like, know I, if there is anybody, even like a NASA computer. I don't know if it could run the extras like fucking high end ray tracing fucking settings that this yeah. game has. I think this game is even, right. even more advanced than the well, technology okay, that 99.9% so .9 of people even have available to them now. Okay, but this comes back to the difference between... <clears throat> We're, what are we talking about here? Are we talking about companies going public, or are we talking about companies over promising again? What's the what are we talking? I about? think it's yes. both, though. Like, <laughs> yeah, because because like you like what what if what if what if in twenty twelve or whenever they they announced the their intentions to make Cyberpunk, what if they had kept it? Like the Witcher three graphics are fantastic. Still, I mean, in my opinion, I mean, maybe maybe that's what they think. I, I think I think you know, developers and investors like have a different idea of like what gamers want versus what gamers actually want. And I don't even think gamers actually understand what they want because like, I would rather have the, like, like if they had just made another kick-ass RPG with graphics that were good, but not, you know, hyper ray tracing NASA supercomputer graphics, then hot dog. Like, why can't you be just the company that makes these badass RPGs and and you don't have to be the 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 greatest thing ever. I mean, does that make sense? What I'm what I'm what I'm saying, you know, like just be just be a yeah. wholeheartedly mediocre instead of a stellar. No, that's not. But it's no. not fucking mediocre. Would, like that's that's, stellar, that's the, that's the though, false still. dichotomy yeah. between like shoot for the fucking stars and mediocre. It, it it's it doesn't it doesn't work on that scale. Like you can be really 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 fucking good at what you do. And what CD Projekt Red is really, really, really fucking good at is world building and RPGs. They could have done that without all this extra ass bullshit. That's, I agree. That's as, as a yeah. gamer, I'm always of the opinion that I'd rather a game perform better than look better. Yeah. Or have good gameplay. You know? I mean, they could have made that game. That, I, I don't, you know, without all the extra stuff, I feel like. But With that know. being said, though, like, where does CD Projekt Red take it from here, right? Um that they've released a statement publicly that they are going to just take the next time that they're going to take the time over the next few months to just fix the heaping pile of trash that they put out. Right. And it's not a heaping pile of trash. Like the core gameplay right. element is there. All the foundation is there. They just need to build off of it and polish it off. And then it'll be probably even game of the year. Who knows? But right now, cause there was talk of them adding like a whole multiplayer mode. Right. And like fucking, like they need to just shut the fuck up about all of that. Like, don't say anything about multiplayer. Definitely don't say anything about like 
you know, d- downloadable content or anything like that. Like you really just got to even if you have completely different teams because you have all this capital from your investors and fucking whatever and you have like a million people working for you and there's one team working on multiplayer there's another team working on dlc there's another team working on the game as it is don't talk about anything other than working on the game as it is like that is the fucking move right now because if you talk about anything other than fixing the game that was put out people are going to be pissed more pissed than they already are now yeah that's what i think i agree Ryan, you look mad. I mean, I hope they, I hope they, I hope they learned a lesson. I guess I don't know. I mean, maybe like there are successful publicly traded gaming companies that make good stuff. Like you know, you, you shouldn't just lump all of them into one spot. And I'm sure it's like an element of like working out all the kinks and stuff. I mean, yeah, I hope they, it's pretty hope new they, for them. You know, if it was only 2018 yeah. that they want publicly traded, then maybe they just. I mean, it's been two years, but maybe they just got to figure out a fucking system that works for the next yeah. game that they put out. My frustration is mostly just with the whole with the whole thing. You know, it has been from the beginning. Like, it, you know, I think that the the hype machine just kind of feeds into itself, and you get you everybody gets disappointed, <laughs> and then and then a game developer that I otherwise pretty much like, you know, gets shit all over, and and um, you know, maybe unfairly, but some of them I think they share some of the blame for it. I don't know. I mean. I'm just a dude wearing a cowboy hat on a fucking podcast. So who, what the right. fuck do I know? I, like, but. yeah, I'm not in the, in the industry. So what the <laughs> fuck do I know either? But I, I, I feel like video game developers always have struggles with timelines. And I feel like mm-hmm. part of that comes because like, as like a, a coder, you know, you put in a line of code that fucks up a bunch of other lines of code that you didn't foresee. And then that takes a bunch of time away from you. And then you go to make a fix for that. And then some other shit gets broken. Like, I don't, I don't know if that's exactly how it works. I imagine that's something of how it works, right? Because, again, I'm not in the industry. I'm just a fucking dude in a podcast. But mm-hmm. I feel like timelines and video games have always had a very rocky relationship in, like, every fucking video game development cycle ever. I don't know if yep. I'm the only one, but... I think you're... I think timelines in any industry have a rocky relationship. I don't, I don't think it's just video games. Yeah, that's true. I work in construction planning. It fucking sucks. <laughs> All right, dudes. Well, uh, we are an hour and 11 minutes into the podcast, so I think I'm going to cut it here unless All we have right. any of the alibis. Yeah, dude, that went, fi- that went by fast. I was actually thinking we were much longer than that, but we, we, went, on some, we went on some good tangents. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Have we right. pissed Ryan off to the point where he's not going to come back? Have we, have we critiqued the, the capitalist system too much? Yeah, find find a different member. I'm done. <laughs> it's my I'm, I'm I gotta be honest. Of capitalism, I'm fine. I, I love. I'm fine. But, I'm yeah. fine. I'm just, I mean, I'm I'm heated right now, but I mean, I, I'll come back. We'll, we'll be fine. I'll, I'll go cool back. off. I, yeah, I mean, uh, it's just. I mean, it's a hearty. It's a healthy disagreement. It's fine. I, I disagree <laughs> with your thought pre- process. You disagree with mine. It's fine. <laughs> Ryan is part yeah. of the corporate system. I just down with the. <laughs> no, I just understand how it fucking works. I I just know the way it works. I, I understand and, and, it too, and I just think that it mm-hmm. doesn't have a place in video gaming in that particular industry. That's all. And the and then because Ryan's counter to that is you're is you're gonna have you're not gonna have you're gonna have mediocre video games unless my it, counter to that is that if is, is money drives innovation. So yeah, if you don't if you don't probably, believe that if you don't believe that I think you're delusional, but. <laughs> all right dudes i'm fucking cutting it here <laughs> make sure that you follow us on twitch and twitter ryan go ahead and go first with your socials and whatnot yeah yeah so the man uh, 007 at yahoo no, my, my twitter handle is at money runs the world uh, <laughs> you can follow me at jeff bezos my name uh, i've got a uh, got a I'm verified on Twitter now, so y'all can yeah. kiss my ass, you little hoes. <laughs> um, no, I'm um, at um, Twitch TV slash Angry Private Ryan, all spelled out, and on Twitter at Angry Private Ryan. Private is uh, condensed down to PVT. Ginger? Uh, at Gingerbeard92 on Twitter, Gingerbeard Gaming, uh, dot Twitch, Twitch TV dot. How do you do that? Twitch TV slash Gingerbeard Gaming. Uh, beard spelled out like the beard that you drink. Um, yeah, I thought you were at Karl Marx. I thought that's yeah, right, right, right. At Communist Manifesto. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, 
You well, got everyone congratulate here. Everyone, a- everyone congratulate Ginger on releasing his book, The Communist Manifesto. <laughs> uh-huh. Yes, yes. Yeah. And been working on it for it's a big, it's a big 50 years. <laughs> it's been a long time, actually. <laughs> A long time in development. A little, just a little bit less than Cyberpunk. If only he was publicly traded, it would have been released I, already. I, you know? I tried to tell him that, but he didn't listen. And I am 12 Tango Dom on Twitter and on Twitch. Stream every weekend and also on the weekdays as well, whenever time allows. And also, the podcast is available in audio only on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts, and Amazon, wherever you listen to podcasts, it's available there. So look at the Easy Company Podcast on those platforms, if not on YouTube. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody, and listening to this um, these these fuel debates. I, I would have to these, I would have to totally say uninformed opinions that we I would have, have to today. recommend <laughs> that if you are listening to this on audio only, go back watch it because. This one because got Ginger's wild. outfit is fucking awesome. <laughs> that yeah, that and, and we really we really got squirrely on this one. So, so go go look at it. <laughs> All right, dudes, thank you so much for checking out this episode. <laughs> we'll see you in the next one. Have a good one, everybody.